Welcome to Anime Out of Context, a comedy review show where a man completely immersed in anime culture torments his co-host, who is only allowed to watch the shows featured here. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash animeoutofcontext. Alongside over 100 hours of exclusive bonus material, all episodes uploaded to Patreon are completely ad-free, even to non-patrons. Thank you for listening, and enjoy. Hello and welcome to Anime Out of Context, the show where I attempt to explain the sometimes weird, sometimes wonderful, but always hilarious world of anime. And finally, we can talk about something other than Sean's horde of 2D waifus. I'm Sean Rollins. I'm Remington Chase. You know, that's uh, weirdly generic enough that could fit in any one of our episodes and have nothing to do with any of the pre-banchers. Yep, because that's just the nature of our friendship, Sean. Sure. Sh- sh- sure, Rem. Sure. Uh, but Rem, I've got a special treat for you this week. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a very heavily requested one. Okay. Uh, one that we've been getting requests for like since podcast inception and one that I'll, i have to admit uh i personally did not have a whole lot of experience with before researching it for this show okay uh because like it was one that i had known about and had seen like an occasional episode here or there but it was never one that really uh like was in my my scope of things Right. Because, sure. you know, me, I younger me was super into a lot of like the heavy action he showed and stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and this was kind of on the other end of the spectrum, because uh, today, Remington, we're going to be watching a uh, classic shoujo anime. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, uh, worrisome. Not just any classic shoujo uh, anime, Rem. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be watching the 1998 Holy classic shit. Card Captor Sakura. Jesus Christ. So tell me, Rob, what do you know about Card Captor Sakura? Um, all right. Well, it's old. You know that because I just told you that. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's worrying. Um, all right. The protagonist okay. is named Sakura. Okay, that's kind of a gimme, but all right, go on. All right, nailing this. And see, here's the thing. I'm trying to make sense of Card Captor, right? Okay. Because it's a shoujo. If it was shown in, I'm like, look, this girl is playing some Yu-Gi-Oh, all right? So when you <laughs> defeat it, you get their monster, you, you, you capture it, bada bing, bada boom. Um, is she the captor of people's V cards, perhaps? Punk! I definitely hope not. I really hope not. Ah, okay, she's a child. Yeah, ten <laughs> years old, Rem. <laughs> Holy shit! All right, well, good. it's good that that theory is disproven. All right. Yeah, that, pretty quickly. Table. Like, we All can right, make... back to card games. <laughs> <laughs> back to card games, please, Rem. Let's <laughs> no. not, let's not get canceled here. <laughs> that's, that's insane. <laughs> oh, no. Um... Yeah, I'm, I think I think now is a good time for me to shut the fuck up <laughs> and let you uh, let you uh, take the reins a bit. Well, Remington, you're when you're thinking old school shoujo, you're thinking to uh, slice of life ro- roms romance. Uh, we're talking old school magical girl shoujo, Rem. Yeah, I I I felt that a little bit. Um, it, like there needs to be something there. So yeah, yes. magical girl. So I'm I'm expecting a younger Sailor Moon. I'll tell you this right now, Rem. Uh, when it came to this particular era of magical girl shows, Sailor Moon and Card Capture Sakura were the ones that were very regularly compared to each other. Okay. Because, you know, they came out around the same time, uh, especially like for Western audiences. Card Capture Sakura, a lot less, you might, ima- uh, might be able to understand, though, because, you know, uh, in the West, Sailor Moon was champion. But, you know, around the same area, Card Capture Sakura got its first anime adaptation, and it was. Uh, it's it was and still is very beloved and very popular. Uh, so much so that it's had uh, like film adaptations, remakes, and uh, the whole the whole nine yards. And it All is right, and so. What what makes it different? Uh, so what's its deal? So pretty straightforward. Uh, it's about our main character, ten year old uh, Sakura Kinomoto, and uh, she was just a pretty ordinary student until she uh, stumbles upon a book filled with cards. You follow it? Okay, yep, yep, yep. Is it just Magical Girl Yu-Gi-Oh? Not quite, not quite. It's not an actual card game as much. As much is as it, it is... Is it like their spells or monsters or... Yeah, essentially what happens is, uh, while she's examining this book, uh, she accidentally, uh, essentially casts a spell, more or less, that releases a fuck ton of monsters into the world from these cards. And, uh, you know, 
uh oh, that's a problem. And I mean, that's that's murder. She's <laughs> she's responsible for the deaths of of countless individuals. Okay, look, it's not murder. At worst, it's like gross negligence or manslaughter. <laughs> Good old negligent genocide, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, since she kind of made this mess, it's kind of up to her to, uh, you know, uh, fix it with the magical powers granted to her via the cards, as well as um, as well as uh, Keroberos, which is uh, the little like magical gifting mascot character. Uh, it's a it's a trope that you're very familiar with, though you haven't really seen its origins all too much. Like it, it's the equivalent of the talking cat from Sailor Moon in a lot of ways. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or in Madoka Magica, Kube, which was the dark, fucked up version that uh, you know causes little girls to uh, you know uh, make wishes, sacrifice their souls. Or the fourth wall breaking bat in Rosario. Yeah, yeah, but nobody likes that bat. It's a terrible bat. It's a terrible bat. Like it's I'm, I'm going to level with you. Yeah. I feel like I feel like most of these kinds of little mascots are bad. Most of the time, I would agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and to the point where I'm kind of like, why do we why do we keep doing it? <laughs> yeah. Like sometimes sometimes mascot characters can be great and beloved. But a lot of for the some times, reason, for some reason, it's like the default is for them to be annoying as fuck. Yeah. And that's that's a very confusing default. That's yeah. very, it's very weird that they decided that was the norm. Yeah, look, man, I, I watched fairy tale religiously when I was younger. <laughs> but even then, I still fucking hated Happy the Cat. Like, like there's, there's a lot out there. Like, I, there are great mascot characters out there. There are. But yeah, the weird default is that most of them kind of suck. <laughs> most yeah. of them kind of suck. Uh, whether or not that's the case for this one, though, I mean, it's up to you. And it's a pre- it's pretty straightforward, man. It's classic uh, shoujo magical girl nonsense going around ca- trying to recapture uh, these escaped card creatures. Hence, you know, card captor Sakura. Okay, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, and it's it's an old school Saturday morning cartoon style of magical girl show, and people wanted us to cover it for a while, and so why not start where it all began with uh, the original uh, 1998. Uh, show like you might think to yourself rem okay so this is a show that has hundreds upon hundreds of episodes uh surprisingly it only has 70 which for the era yeah isn't a lot i mean for for the era that's kind of insane yeah and it's like well shit okay so they told the story got in and got out like it only aired for two years (laughs) like (laughs) really impressive for for that time period yeah and it's still a very modern beloved a series and has had spinoffs as well as uh you know remakes and readaptations films like it's 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 a very popular franchise overseas so i suppose we really just need to see what your thought process is on it and as well as how it compares to sailor moon because you yourself weren't the biggest fan of sailor moon but i don't know maybe this one has a little something something that makes it a uh, little bit better is there gonna be a random motherfucker who shows up and does nothing <laughs> Are you asking if Tuxedo Mask makes a cameo? Is there going to be a Tuxedo Mask? Well, Rem, we'll have to see uh, ourselves, won't we? Swear to God. But yeah, so I think without further ado, let's go straight into it. Let's go watch some Card Captor Sakura. And we are back after watching five whole episodes of the hit 1998 anime Card Captor Sakura. And Remington, the real question is, is Is this better or worse than Sailor Moon? Or are you just trying to swear off of anything from the 90s from here on out? (laughs) Like, do I need to do do I need to confiscate your Jinko jeans? Is that what needs to happen? (laughs) Not my Jinko jeans. That was a 90s thing, right? I'm pretty sure that was 90s. I didn't just age Uh, myself even more, did I? (laughs) Look, they don't have tuxedo masks. So already that's a thumbs up. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, let's jump into it. We we start the show as we start half of the episodes I saw yes. uh, with Sakura waking up. <laughs> hey, man. It very much is like, uh, what do we start with? I don't know. Have her wake up. It's the start of a new day, isn't it? <laughs> well, look, when you when you unleash unspeakable horrors into the world, solving that does feel kind of like a day by day type of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I will. I hey, will touch on that. Uh, we, we Sakura, she gives a a very 
exposition dump. Hi, I'm Sakura. This is my whole deal. This is who I am. This is my family. That's my brother. That's my dad. My mom's dead. And she rollerblades <laughs> to school. Uh, <laughs> ah, that classic, that classic <laughs> character introduction that has happened in so many slice of life anime. Which also means that, like, her mom was the previous holder of the cards. Like, that has to be the case. Hey, no spoilers, Rem. Oh, no spoilers! Um, this is, this is you know, a uh, <laughs> a nearly 30-year-old show, so, like, you know. Yeah. And, hey, uh, she- for those saying, no, no, it's closer to 25, dog, as somebody who's close to 30, it's close to 30. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> I- I'm an expert at this point. Uh, we learned she has a crush on her brother's friend, which is a really weird dynamic. Yeah. I... Here's the thing that makes it really weird, right? Okay. It's the fact that he is literally twice her size. <laughs> she she goes up to his hip, yes. and I am not exaggerating. Yes. And it, at the same time, it could just be like, oh, unrequited love for somebody like older than you. And like, kind of, but they're going, like the brother's friend is inviting her on a few too many one-on-one lunch dates without any of the rest of her family knowing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. it seems <laughs> I don't I don't like whatever the fuck is going on there. I'm not excited for when brother's friend gets plot relevant. I don't like it. <laughs> let's just let's just cut him out and ignore him. All right, let's just uh we meet Sakura's best friend, Tomoyo, and she loves, she's a rich girl who loves fashion and film. Mm -hmm. Um, We also see Sakura at cheering practice where she's very talented and then she's home alone and she hears spooky sounds. And then she finds a magic book in her house, uh, the the clow, um, which is the fucking worst name (laughs) of anything. Um, What, man? It doesn't. What's wrong the with the cloud? cloud? <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't sound good coming out of your mouth. Like <laughs> it needs it needs something, man. Look, it's just named after the guy who who made it. Why not call it Reed? The Reed cards or something like that. My cloud. Fuck, that is better. <laughs> that is Yeah! <laughs> that is better. And then people then fans can be like, oh what, like R E A D? No, no, no. Like uh like the plant. And it's like, oh, okay, that's kind of cute. Yeah, that that Yeah, I just that... I just don't like Clow. Clow cards almost works, but the clow really doesn't. <laughs> yeah, because you got the alliteration. But, like, it feels like you're just not saying clown. I unironically Googled to make sure. I was like, did they mean call it the clow? Um, and, and then they exposited, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, like, it, it also, like, it's very clearly, like, on the book itself, you know? Like, yeah, yes. Uh, so she opens the book. Oh, Wind is activated, which then sends all of the other cards to the high heavens. Um, have, have you seen Lilo and Stitch, the series? Yes. It's like that. Yes, yes. Um, look, Lilo and Stitch, Ben 10. This is, it's a long lineage that has continued from there. Uh, Danny Phantom, right? It's, it's just a winning formula for kids. I mean, it's, um, it, it is very much an old school Saturday morning monster of the week style show. I, I, and I, I'm being genuine. I think this, that format, like, it's one of the stronger cliche templates to use Hmm. because uh, a lot of times I'll rag on things for being unoriginal, right? And it's especially when they're using the most boring of tropes. There are cool tropes out there. Now, ideally, you still want to do something with them, but uh, there's also just tropes out there which should have died instantaneously but still go on, and every time they're bad. Uh, and, and so, what, you like know, uh, all the incest? Oh, God. Not all tropes are, are created equal. Uh, it, 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 this one, it's, it's a good one. Uh, so, unleashed all of that, and we meet this flying cat bear. Uh, that's going to be her her familiar, mm-hmm. more or less. Yep, Caroberos. Caroberos. Uh, it it seems like they're it seems like a weird Cerberus dealio. Yeah, that that's the uh, Japanese pronunciation of Cerberus. Yeah, which also then why is it not is a three headed dog? 
Yeah. Yeah, I understand, like, oh, it's a guardian. And I'm like, ah, yeah, but Cerberus, you know, I would say there's two things that, like, it needs to have. And one of them, yeah, it's a guardian, 100%. We all agree on that. Glad we're on the same page. But then right above that one, <laughs> just, just, just stitching it out. Uh, it's, it's a fucking dog. It's a three-headed dog. Why is it a flying cat bear? I don't understand. But, <laughs> uh, well, you know, like. Imagine if they can be still be a cute little shoujo three-headed dog, even add wings to it. That'd be adorable. Yeah, like, it, it's very much a case of taking a, a name and a concept. And that's it, right? Like, yes, like, yes. But you know, hey, on the like, looking at it from a positive perspective, it's kind of its own character now because of it. It just happens to be named after a, a you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it unleashes all the evils into the world, absolute chaos. Um, and though, also, all of these entities, they do have personalities and sentience. So I kind of don't know how I feel about them being enslaved. Yeah. Oh, I should also um, clarify that uh, before before people get mad at me, uh, Kerberos is also how it's probably pronounced in uh, the original Greek as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like Kerberos uh, or something along those lines. I, I just I want to clarify. <laughs> I just want to say that Kerberos is how it's pronounced in Japan, and I'm not this not saying that's how it's properly. I wanted to clarify because I know people are going to yell at me and I don't want people to yell at me. I have Greek friends. One of them edits for the podcast. So, uh, but, but, but yeah, so I, I feel like it's weird that they're sentient, but yeah. can be captured. It's the good old like Pokemon. You can catch a Rangaroo, but a Rangaroo can also in the lore be taught how to be a Pokemon trainer and has a genius level IQ. IQ and I don't know, man. That is getting into weird territory here. This is getting into a, a strange realm. Yeah. Look, hey, Rem, don't think about it. D don't worry about Pokemon it. Pokemon isn't dogfighting. <laughs> it's about friendship and companions. So uh, eventually, uh, eventually Sakura sees the fly card, just a giant fucking bird, and gets on uh, her rollerblades, does a six stunt onto the bird's back, and then she's like, well, I only have the wind card. Let's use the wind card. And John, uh, the, so you're familiar with wind, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that thing that'll chain and bind you up. Pardon? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Is that not, is that not like the go-to thing for wind? Is it a little weird that their one move, their primary move wind, isn't like airbending or using gusts of wind to push off anything, it's always used exclusively to bind and trap things. Hmm. Yeah, a little bit weird. Little, oh, it's a curious decision. Um, well, the 90s were a different time, Ram. <laughs> if anything, I feel like if you had done wood first, right, then that would make sense because then you can wrap it in the branches, which they kind of do later. Yeah. So why not? I, I don't know, man. It's weird. Uh, but bada bing, bada boom, they capture fly very easy. Uh, and it's, you get a little power every time you capture, you, you fight a beast, you capture a beast, you get its powers. Good formula. Very interesting. Cause then you're interested, not just in the monster of the week, but also you're interested to see how it'll look when, uh, Sakura uses those cards, right? Uh, episode two, you'll be amazed here. Sakura wakes up. Oh no. A little bit late this time. Uh, re-exposition for the first episode, it's the 90s, and so it's hyper-episodic, and it needs to be like, hey, just let me, if you, this is the only thing you're watching, this is all you need to know. All right, get in there, kiddos, right? Uh, which I, I understand the reasons why, though in the age of streaming, it, it is a, a minor nuisance, nothing major, but definitely, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's, one of, it's it. one of those things where you can implement the, uh, the old-fashioned shonen skip, as it were. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, she's given flowers by brother's friend. Weird. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> her best friend, meanwhile, is like, hey, I, I have some footage I want to show you, Sakura. And she's like, sure. All right, let's see it. And the footage is of Sakura flying. And Sakura's like, what the hell? And Tomoyo's like, it's pretty neat. How do you do that? And, and so she's, <laughs> she's know, just told a, everything. That's a fair question, honestly. <laughs> like, if T I Tomoyo kind of just vibes through the whole thing. She's like, Wow, that's cool. Which it, because it's in the 90s, um there's this impression that anybody 
with any kind of powers. You don't even need to justify it. You just know they have to hide it, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's just the default. Uh, the closest to a justification that's given for anything is that Carabaros would seem like a talking stuffed animal and people would want him or something. It's stupid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's almost never great reasons why people can to know. Um, th that's why I think secret identities in superpowered media is being, fu being, uh, taken away largely in recent times, just cause it's like, how convoluted do we need to get? And also wouldn't they just be really cool to most people? And the answer is yes. Yeah. Uh, th this, and this is too time... lighthearted of a show to get into the really dark shit that people would do. Yeah, like yeah, I'm reading Chainsaw Man right now, and things things are. <laughs> look, let, let's just say that the palate cleanse of car, of of watching Card Captor Sakura while dealing with the current events in the Chainsaw Man manga is one hell of a tonal whiplash. Let me tell you. Yeah. Uh, also, there's there's not a lot of urgency. It's mostly a slice of life show. Mm -hmm. uh, that at the very end of episodes, it'll be like, oh, monster, gotta capture that. Um, which is very fascinating because like. You gotta imagine people are dying off screen. Y y y you would think, <laughs> yeah. But it's okay, Rem, because if we don't address it, <laughs> then <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> oh no, the fire card has hit the orphanage! <laughs> Shit! <laughs> oh no, that was a completely unrelated fire incident. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> oh look, we might have a hint of where the fire card is. We should try and find it. <laughs> oh man. So, uh, episode two, it's about the shadow card. And the shadows form and create some mischief during the school day, stack some desks and shit. Uh, and so it's like, all right, we got to capture the shadow. And Tomoyo gives Sakura some magical girl gear, uh, which will become a running theme. And it's just a uh, different gear every time, which is a fun little extra detail. Yep. Um, very creative, very unique. I vibe with it. It's uh, this. This is rad as hell. Especially considering it's the fucking 90s. That That yes. is extra for the 90s. Oh, yeah, because, like, for those who haven't watched many 90s animations or, like, you know, animation prior to the, let's say, late 2000s, uh, man, animating new things was a trial. So they would reuse assets all the time. And there is some of that in the show as well. But the fact that they, uh, like, the extra amusing thing is, uh, Rem, originally there were only 19 cards, right, in the original manga. Uh, yeah. in the anime, I think there's like close to 70. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So. And, but, and, and like, I kept expecting like a long magical girl transformation, but it's just like a medium length. Here's my staff. Yeah. Uh, which is what I said bits. when I first met, met Rem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, they, there's, they, they could have indulged a lot more in just reusing bland assets as we've seen with other magical girl shit or Digimon or, you know, just any 90s anime yeah, yeah, yeah. really. Um, but it's it's less than average, which I admire. Anyway, uh, they, they go and they're going to capture it at night. Um, but, oh no, the shadows, they're super powerful at night, so they need to turn the lights on um, because obviously they don't have sunlight. Um, and it does feel like they forget the first half of the episode here. Because they explain how, like, if you shine the light on them, then eventually you'll just see the true shadow card. Mm -hmm. We did see them in broad daylight <laughs> doing normal shadow card. That was our introduction to them. Yeah. Was yeah. doing all of that. And then the second half of the episode, they're like, if only we had broad daylight. And I'm like, I don't know if that would help. In fact, I know it wouldn't because that's where this started. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, you know, uh, perhaps, perhaps not the most thought out in those details, but they capture Shadow, bada bing, bada boom. Uh, episode three, it's capturing water at the aquarium, uh, where water, the water card tries to drown a woman and tries to drown a penguin. <laughs> One of which is much harder than the other. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, uh, her brother who works at the aquarium he helps the penguins. He's a waiter at the aquarium. He's also a waiter at some other place. He has every job. He just uh, has all the jobs. And he, he saves the day. Um, and then Brother's friend 
takes the sister out on a date to the aquarium. I don't know. It's real weird. Uh, but w- once again, water drama. Eventually, it's like, how do we capture water? Because it's, it's so fluid. And the answer is to freeze it, uh, which is very easy. The actual handling of spirits, I know I've kind of yada yada over them. Yeah. Because the show kind of yada yadas over them. Basically, the last few minutes of every episode, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, all right, here's how we're going to capture it. And then they do, and it works. Yep. And (laughs) it's just like super straightforward. Um, the, The first 20 minutes or so, that's all like, all right, here's a little bit about the card. Here's a bunch of uh, miscellaneous personal stuff. All right, now then we captured it. Cool. <laughs> hey, man, sometimes, sometimes plans just work. <laughs> yeah, very often in this case. Uh, at episode four, we have, uh, we have the rain card and the wood card. Uh, and, and they combine to go a little bit crazy, uh, but then they capture both of them. Bada bing, bada bam. And then... Uh, episode five, we get the jump card. Uh, we, okay, <laughs> sure. I guess we had fly. So yeah. So I mean, if you have fly, kind of who cares about jump? <laughs> I don't know, man. I like jumping's fun. I don't know. You're... Have you been on a trampoline? Oh, that was. Oh wait, hold on. Hey. Uh... <laughs> hey. Oh, no, my, my obliterated knee. <laughs> oh, uh, for those not. For those not in the know, uh, when uh, about uh, nearly a decade ago now, I, I had an incident where I obliterated my knee, tore my meniscus, folded it over, tore my MCL, and tore my ACL. Oh, uh, just casually jumping on a trampoline. So good times, good memories, good memories. So the jump card isn't really for Remington, as it turns out. <laughs> but it also just feels like you're on, you're like, oh, cool, I unlocked this dope new weapon in this game and then you're like oh that's worse stats all right i guess i'm never gonna use it though uh <laughs> look man as somebody who's been playing a lot of elden ring lately uh you know <laughs> it's how it you goes. can get a lot done with the with the crappier weapons if you're really good at using them <laughs> but you know uh but yeah there's lots of plush and miscellaneous stuff and jump possesses kind of a plush um sure why not mm-hmm. and it, uh, and they're able to to capture it. Bada bing, bada bam. This one gives them the most trouble, but not that much in the grand scheme of things. Uh, and those are the first five episodes. I mean, it doesn't get much more straightforward and simple than that, Rem. Uh, all in all, it seems like you were pretty okay with the show. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely something where it's like, it's a kid's show from the 90s, and you I feel that. It's a good kid's show from the 90s. Um, but you can't separate either of those things fully from it. Mm-hmm. So the quality is definitely there. If you enjoy high quality kids shows and you don't mind some 90s artifacts there, you'll vibe with this one. Clearly, clearly effort has been put into it. Uh, you get some fun designs and stuff like that. Fun little powers and miscellaneous. It's a great format for a monster of the week because it's pulling double duty. Mm-hmm. It's basically, you, you know, one of the most frustrating things about like watching Pokemon, it would be that so often Ash Ketchum, he would, he, he wasn't catching enough Pokemon. He just wasn't catching enough Pokemon. We can all agree. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like when the tagline of your show is got to catch them all. Yeah. He catches like 10 per season, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah. And, and so it's nice that just about every episode uh, we're capturing one, maybe even two different spirits. That then can be used in different powers and things. Um, I unfortunately think that some will go underused. We have yet to see the shadow power, for instance. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, which, you know, it, but it's still nice because there's just that curiosity of like, oh, how could this be used? Uh, oh, very interesting. Oh, cool. And and so it's a great format. It's a great format for a show. Um, obviously, I am neither demographically nor temporally this show's audience. <laughs> uh, but hey, it, it's still pretty decent. It's pretty solid, even even after the 90s and kids show influences. So what you're telling me is I should return the magical girl staff that I got you. Because <laughs> I, I thought this was going to be such a slam dunk that, you know, I figured I figured you'd want all the all the card captor merch. Hmm. Wow. Oh, well, that's a that's a couple hundred dollars down the drain. That's a shame. <laughs> a couple. Oh God. Oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. I just had Dylan print it. <laughs> <laughs> the Much boy cheaper. does love. 
3D printing. Oh, so much, so much. Like if I, if I genuinely, if I went to him and I was like, hey, I've got a great idea for a bit for the podcast that nobody will see because we're an audio program. Uh, would you do it for me? And be like, oh yeah, let's do it. Then I'd be like, yeah, great, <laughs> fantastic. And that would be it. That would be, you know, game over. We'd have, we, you would have a magical girl one for a show that you didn't absolutely drive into the ground. And that would be the end of it. But, you know, some some things weren't meant to be, I'm afraid. Some things weren't meant to be. <laughs> Shame. It is truly tragic. Uh, but yeah, no, Card Capture Sakura is quite the lasting show because of that. It, it's impressive how well it holds up, all things considered. Yeah, like, if you were to show it to a modern kid, they might have some questions about some things, but all in all, they'd probably be like, yeah, no, I'm fine with this. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, honestly, like, same. Like, I didn't watch all 70 episodes of the original season, right? Because fuck dude <laughs> like i i don't i only have so much time but i watched yes. a good like dozen or so give or take uh mostly the canon stuff because that's the stuff that i would have cared about the most uh it, it's a it feels like uh assuming like the dub is any good that it would be good second monitor viewing oh yeah a thousand percent like if you need something to put on in the background and you want to uh, uh just to vibe so something that gives you like that nostalgia vibe even though you, you might not have ever seen it Card Capture Sakura is not a bad shout, all things considered. Yeah. Uh, but the question is, on everybody's mind, Rem, uh, this or Sailor Moon, what do you think uh, does it better? Um, Probably this. Yeah? So if we could just take the Brothers Friend and Tuxedo Mask and banish both of them. <laughs> if we just, could just take, just take them around them... back and uh, push them in front of Truck Coon. Is that... Yeah, 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 <laughs> just, just off them. They're unnecessary, all right? They're only dragging their respective shows down. <laughs> one more than the other, you might say. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, uh, only one of those characters has a meme about them not doing anything. <laughs> the other one is one that people forget exists. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, you win some, you'll lose some. Uh... <laughs> Uh, the important thing is, Rem, uh, Card Capture Sakura is a beloved show, and all the fans of it aren't going to kill us this week, which is, in my opinion... Huzzah! Yeah. Like, it even uh, won an award for Best Anime in 99. Sure, why not? Yeah, I mean, fuck it. I don't know, compared, yeah, compared to the other old shit I've seen, deserved. Oh, <laughs> uh, man, that's gonna piss people off. There it is. We need, most we need... old... Most of the old anime is absolute trash, all right? That's just how it goes. Ah, oh, there we go. We needed that conflict. We needed a little <laughs> bit of a little bit of something something. Uh, so then, Rem, do you have any guesses on what the mal score for Card Captor Sakura is? Um, oh man, there's like there's got to be some nostalgia there as well. So it's like 8.21. Final answer? Sure. All right. Uh with 223,000 ratings, which is pretty good, I'd say. Pretty good. Yeah. Not as high as you'd expect for a legacy show, but, you know, most people who watched this show back in the day probably aren't going to be writing modern reviews about it. But those that are, they gave uh, Card Capture Sakura a very respectable 8.17. Oh, okay. Hey, well, I was right there. Yeah. Because, like, by and large, basically everybody who watched this show likes it. Like, the amount of people who have negative opinion shows or middling opinions of this show are like the minority like if i looking at the score breakdown it's very clearly weighted to the high end like there are a stupid amount of tens and nines the vast majority is eights followed closely by uh the uh sevens and like then it rapidly drops off to like a seven percent of them gave it a six out of ten which is like you know it, it's a very weighted score and whether it's just nostalgia or genuine love for the show hard to say but it just kind of goes to show that sometimes a simple easy to watch show is all you need <laughs> it's got the basics down but it does it well yeah and you know if it inspires future magical girl shows which rem from what we've covered you can clearly see that it did like oh yes like magical girls were a thing before this obviously card captor walked so ben 10 my favorite magical girl anime <laughs> could run <laughs> God, I heard they remade the Ben 10 show recently. Oh man, there's so many iterations. Yeah, like, and that's surprising to me, because I thought they nailed it the first time around, like, with him as, you know, the original iteration followed with, like, the, the time-skipped age-up version. 
All right, there's uh, the original Ben 10 that went on for four seasons. Yeah, yeah. Then, uh, basically immediately after that, was Ben 10 Alien Force, which went on for another three seasons. Yeah, that was the aged up one, yeah. Then Ben 10 Ultimate Alien, uh, which was right after that, that had another three seasons. Uh, Then there was Ben 10 Omniverse, uh, which lasted for eight seasons. Holy shit. (laughs) (laughs) uh and then there was a small gap and then uh ben 10 2016 then there's also there's the movie secret of the omnitrix destroy all aliens versus the aliens race against time and alien swarm i feel like destroy all aliens is not a great title (laughs) (laughs) i don't know i feel like there are some connotations there that isn't really uh isn't really the best Look, man, I, yeah, let's see. So the classic continuity was, holy shit, all the way from from the OG to Omniverse, apparently. Wow. Uh, shit, I didn't realize it, it I didn't realize that original run was as long running as it was. Like, there's so much Ben 10. Yeah, like there's a classic continuity and a reboot continuity, which is fascinating to me. Like it is truly fascinating uh, because like, Kid Me loved the OG, and when I heard they remade it, I was like, oh, that's probably going to be awful, but, you know. How the fuck are there hundreds of episodes? Hey, man, I, I think you already know the answer to that. <laughs> what the hell, dude? It's crazy. Look, man, the the interpersonal dynamics between Ben 10 and Kevin Levin were, you know, some very strong uh, character dynamics for a for a young Sean. And then Kevin, Ele- Kevin Levin fucks Ben's cousin. Yeah, uh, Gwen? Yeah, Gwen. Yeah, Gwen. And she gets magic powers or something. Yeah, like, she she was like, uh, she had like purple psychic powers, I think, which was really cool, honestly. (laughs) Welcome to the Ben 10 podcast. This is, yeah, this is our Ben 10 fan cast. (laughs) Which, which, you know, we weren't anticipating to discuss that. Grandpa was a real one, all right? He was. He kind of was. Like, he was just a Grandpa from Ben 10, one of my favorite old guys. Um, obviously, Gene Wilder from Willy Wonka hasn't beat, but, you know, mm. he's still, he's up there. <laughs> God, I, I hope the OG Ben 10 still holds up. I, I really do, because kids be <laughs> fucking love that shit, because it, it, it was just, it was just American anime, let's be honest. Uh, oh, yeah, hardcore. God. But yeah, it just goes to show, a good Monster of the Week show is a good Monster of the Week show, and that is, uh, worth the time. So I guess the final question I need to ask you, Rem, is there any chance you'd want to watch a little bit more Card Captor Sakura with me? Yeah, not deliberately, but I'm I'm fine if it's on. I'll have it on in the second monitor, you know. Well, we'll we'll have a shoujo party one of these days, and it'll be great. <laughs> sure, we'll all dress sure. up as our favorite Sailor Scouts. <laughs> it'll be a grand old time. Uh, it'll be it'll be just us and our manliest friends. Perfect. Ah, uh, man. So I think with that in mind, thank you all so much for tuning in. We really appreciate it. If you enjoyed Remington getting some of that good old-fashioned 90s nostalgia, then please head on over to wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a review. They mean the world to us, and we do read every single one. And if that is not enough for you, twitch.tv slash anime out of context, where myself, Dylan, and Remington do occasionally play video games very poorly. Lately, I've been playing Elden Ring. I can't stop. Somebody help me. And if that is still not enough for you, you can head on over to patreon.com slash anime out of context where you gain access to all kinds of lovely bonus material, including having the opportunity to be thanked live on the podcast. So, Rem, who are we thanking this week? Well, as always, we would like to send our regards to all of our bland bitch protagonists, as well as our magical girls, who we really appreciate. But moving on, we get to our yandere waifus, who are trying to drown us along with all the penguins. And on that list, we have <laughs> Xanax, Yandere Neko, Wonka Gave My Willy the Everlasting Knob Slobber, Wonka uh, Domain uh, Expansion Inflation Porn, Wolfire56, Where's Our DBZ Review, you ginger fuck? When's the Bible out of context on Lot and His Daughters? Wes Kane, welcome to Anime in Full and Complete Context, the show where we at AOC are proud members of the SOS Brigade. Watching Requiem for Spoon Man at 0.5 speed, Utah number one, Unhinged Prax. Totally fun hearing you mess up the name. Will change. Titan CNH, the Susanator, the Flying Spaghetti Monster, the Danish Viking will conquer the world with Ruinor Zoro as my navigator. The Capybara thanks 
uh, thinks about her glorious blue-eyed king nonstop. His eyes are beautiful. Fuck you. They're real weird. <laughs> Turban. Super Zoo. I fucking Stacey's knew it. mom. <laughs> Boon Man ate out Sean's ass and was disappointed with how many dingleberries he got that don't taste like actual berries. She oh, yeah. she could noko on my noko noko till I koshi tan tan. Sean wants to give Spoon Man a thank you, Yank. Sean Cho Rem Kagiyasama dubbed, and my life is yours. Sean's weekly Judy Up Shore update. We are at the halfway mark now, boys. The hips are covered. Sean thinks Conception is better than Doke Bone Kingdom. Sean ruined my happy sugar life when he forcefully used my face as a toilet before coming. What? Sean. I don't know, man. I, you're, you're, you're a degenerate boy, Sean. Uh, I. Not that um, flavor of degenerate, thank you very much. <laughs> Sean can do 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 these nuts. Sarah from the Shark Plushie. Sequoia to Kai, that's what she said. Ross Palmer, Rhiannon Williams. Remington uses the deer crackers of liberation. Remington is right. Rem wants to revisit Daddy Sean's no-no square. Rem uses the drums of liberation to free all weeps from bad anime. Rem hit rock bottom is still on top of Sean. Rem doesn't completely hate my favorite shows. Regulatrion, Raptor King. Pro tips out of context, the pellet with the poisons and the flagon with the dragon. The vessel with the pestle has the brew that is true. Professor Fox, Pacwell Musico, Oni Chi Chi 10 out of 10 family show. Off on a two year mission, take my money in the meantime. My favorite dinosaur is the Triceratops. Makeka 7 Hirto, making fake mile counts so I can rate Forest Fair 5 10 out of 10. Macaroni Uchisa, Lucky Star is the King of Moe. Link Joe Girl, Lenard 98, King Rich Rock, Cassidy, Jax, Jam Hands, Jake Dent. I'm the original guy that made you say cunt every week. The other guy's just the pretender. I will never get more Ace of the Diamond. Now I cry. I ordered a Periscope online and they sent me a full-size one from a submarine, reports Captain Misaka. I can't believe I made a cut for this. Hollow purple. Hey, Sean, want some fuck? Hattori Seiki. Haha, <laughs> gosh, Sean, paint some shapes on your face and there you have Ahsoka. Tracer one government drone. Glenn Michael Dolan. Burn the guy learning guitar by watching anime. Farmer Weep thinking of commissioning Art of Judy Hops and Gene Wilder while Sean and Rem watch from cut chairs. Jesus Christ. I... Jesus Christ. That one's Fanta. your fault. That one's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're the one on Judy Hops, all right? Uh, Fanta Again, your fault, McCorkle. <laughs> Diana Madrid, your pixie and worshiper, Daniel Riot. Daddy Rem, tell me a bedtime story. Correction, Rem has sexy low bunny dressed as Wonka. Cheese Monkey, Chair of the God supports Rem in these dark times. Cat girls are best girls, so give me them cute little paws. Cameron, Brock hearts for Jew dudes, and I said that's disgusting, so I'm making a call-out post on Twitter.com. Blake Star, Ben Docato. Been a while since I've changed my name on here, but, but I got a third over 4.0. I can't believe it, I'm also changing my major from funeral. Batman couldn't hate fuck that information out of me. Back and wet because reversed will get us canceled. Amazing Muffin, AJ Tunnels, Aisha Gachi, a movie piece of trash. Inappropriate Joey Wheeler. Oh no, bro! I zigged in you, Zagamoto. Uh, and now we move on to the Boy Wizard tier. What are they getting this week, Sean? Oh man, I, easiest one of my life, my guy. They're gonna get a cloud card. <laughs> Heck yeah! Uh, we start with Willy Wonka's Wonky Willy. <laughs> oh, that's stupid. Um, oh shit, where where'd my list go? What the hell? God, that fucking fandom wikis suck sometimes there we go all right uh they're going to get uh the light week four asking for a darling in the franks review the dark umbracite the windy that mouse girl the earthy <laughs> tails wondering if sean can tank in sail tears the fiery spoon man the aristocrat the wood silent secondary the watery sean will you cosplay Ahsoka? you two have so much in common we really don't uh it does also sound like I'm describing, like, a wine's flavor notes, doesn't it? <laughs> like, I'm just waiting for the tannins to show up. Uh, the flower. Scourge, best 20 bucks spent, LMAO. The fly. Sammy K loves the feel of Rusty Spoon Man against her salad fingers. The jump. Rias. The erase. Rose Cop. The mirror. Nightshade Blade wants to gush over magical girls. The maze. Monogatari is everything you ever said you want in an anime. It is freaking well written by the freaking... Nisoyasin. Uh, the Illusion. Mike. The Sword. Miguel Delion. The Shield. Latinos will from now on- Latinos will from now on be known as Butler Rat on Patreon 2. Uh, The Shadow. I summon the ultimate Exodia. The Thunder. Hopping on the Monogatari train, because why not? <laughs> and the Glow. Crosskirk. Alright, so those were the canon ones. Now we're moving on to the, uh, the non-canon ones. Uh... <laughs> Up to you decide if uh, these are better or, or worse sounding. They're uh, all the, from Sean's fanfic. <laughs> the Arrow. 
Crimson Reapers just because of the sides. <laughs> the big. Congrats, you've been subpoenaed to the Diddy Party. Oh, no. Oh, God. Uh, the Bubbles. Carver 271. The Change. Blood Cell, the one of many that rushes to Rem's lower half when he thinks about Gene, Wilde's ca- Gene Wilder's candy cane stash in his pocket. The Cloud. Beethoven 1201. The Create. Be it one or two weeks, I'll still forget to change my Patreon name. The Dash. Anime Match of the Week, plus sized banana. The Dream. Animated Z. The Fight. And every day that raven comes to visit. The Float. And All Father declares that Anime, anime Bonsai is back on for one last farewell con, baby! The Libra. And now we move on to the inappropriate Joey Wheeler tier, where, uh, as Joey Wheeler, I will supply uh, a brand new cloud card for you, and Sean, as Joey Wheeler, will tell you uh, what power that will do for you. Oh, switching it up a little, I see. All right. We start with, they say beauty is on the inside, so your viscera welcomes me in. Walls of flesh so warm and wet. I want you for myself for once. The flesh. Ah, uh, man. Uh, when you activate the flesh, God. God. <laughs> God, that. God, that sucks to say. Um, yeah. The power you gain is the ability to uh, just grill up the finest meats. Sean thinks humanity has declined. Maybe but better suited to my tastes and will show me that anime next week. Uh, you are going to get the Mario. Uh, it's like the jump, but more Italian. <laughs> Rowdyo, you are going to get the Dylan. <laughs> it's like a combination of the dark and the shadow, just with a little extra love for 3D printing. <laughs> Rem needs to watch you many as the client, if not just for the loaf of bread committing suicide. You are gonna get the loaf of bread. Uh, now this is, this is a tricky one, because you'd think it'd be food related. But actually, uh, it's the ability to get in the most perfect, comfortable position wherever you may be. Red Kumiko has decided to show the anime humanity has declined. Instead of the Monogatari series, you get the Batman. Uh, man. It's the power of money. Maybe Sean will show Rem humanity has declined. Instead of the Monogatari series, Chicken Corpses and Ave Maria, you get the Daki Makura Castle. Uh... That one's power is the power to force any kind of bit into the podcast and have it be remembered for eternity. And I'm a regulation listener that used to listen to Face Jam, but now listen to 100% Eat Rare Kumiko. You get the Karaoke Bar. Uh, where you get the amazing ability to uh, put anybody who's singing into their own special music video, a la, a la Yakuza series. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you all for tuning in. If you want to reach out for a qu- comment, question, feedback, or recommendation, you can tweet us at AnimeConPod on Twitter or send an email to AnimeOutOfContext at gmail.com. Once again, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. We love and appreciate you very, very much. And as always, don't fuck your sister. do 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 Yeah, look, man, I watched Fairy Tale religiously when I was young. But even then, I still fucking hated myself. <laughs> <laughs>